Good morning. I would like to welcome all of you to our salary employment forecast webinar. My name is Howard and I'm the regional director of Michael Page. I've been at Page Group for 15 years and I'm keen to share some insights with you today. In the call today, I, also, I would also like to introduce to you my colleague Jermaine, who is our corporate communications manager and will be the administrator for, administrator for today's webinar. Jermaine, over to you. Hi. Good morning and thank you, Howard. Hi, everyone. Thank you for dialing in to our Hong Kong Salary Benchmark webinar, like what Howard has just mentioned. So if all of you are dialing in as attendees, I would like you to know that your mic and your video has been function has been disabled, so you'll not be able to hear yourself speak. But don't worry, that's fine because you don't have to adjust any of the settings. However, you'll still be able to interact with us. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see three little icons. The first one is a chat function. So what that does is throughout the entire webinar, if you have any questions or any concerns, just send me a chat and I'll be monitoring it. I will reply you personally. Another one would be the Q&A box that would be really important for you. So throughout um, Howard's presentation, when he's going through the different segments and sectors, you'll be able to type questions into there. And this will all be answered later during our question and answer segment. When typing in your question, if you see something which you really like as well, or you like answered, go ahead and give it a thumbs up vote. This will um, make sure that all the popular questions are filtered to the top, so Howard would definitely answer them. Finally, there's also a raise and function that sends us a signal as well that you also need some help or you have some concern and I will also reply you. Throughout this entire webinar, there will be three polls which we'll be sending out as well. They will flash on your screen. All you have to do is to just take a quick second to answer them. And that's all you need to know. So Howard, you can go ahead and start. Great, thank you so much, Jermaine. So I'm keen to uh, walk through our agenda for today. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, so. In terms of what we'll cover today in today's webinar, we will talk about the market updates. I'm sure all of you are interested to know what the market sentiments are in the current climate. I will talk about specific industry sentiments, and then we will dive right into a salary benchmark report. And finally, as Jermaine mentioned, we will have a Q&A session. So in terms of market update, there's no doubt that we are going through some challenging and uncertain times, which is changing week by week. Now, what was initially a Greater China issue had escalated into a regional issue and has now turned into a global pandemic. So subsequently, in the greater, in the recruitment world, what we are seeing is that there are certain industries impacted, initially from the retail, hospitality and travel industry in the domestic market, had moved on to the industrial and manufacturing sectors in greater China, and has now affected multinationals who are potentially putting roles on hold in a week and see mode. Now, however, given these uncertainties and with all things considered, I would say that Hong Kong is still in a fairly good position relative to other regions. Now, say for example, if we look at the unemployment rate, we are currently looking at a 3.7% unemployment rate, which is an all-time high for Hong Kong. However, relative to other regions, it's still a fairly low number. The GDP number is at negative 0.3%, which puts us at a borderline recession status. But once again, these metrics is relative to other markets, it's still in a fairly good position. So as you can tell, I'm, I'm an optimist. And as you know, Hong Kong is a place that bounces back very quickly. And I'm a firm believer of this. So I'm certainly keeping my fingers crossed that in the short term, we will be impacted without a doubt. I would see Q2 as being a little bit tougher than Q1. But these are all things that we see in the short term. But in the medium to long term, I would see that the market will recover very quickly. So. On that note, I'm actually keen to hear from you. This is the first poll that we have. How do you feel about the current market? Okay, so we can see here that majority of you have mentioned it's going to get tough or uncertain. And yeah, I mean, there's no doubt, as I said, the, the tough part is, is more of a, hopefully a short-term uh, situation that we're facing. And once again, we're hoping that the market will recover in due course. So without a doubt, I think we all are facing similar sentiments. Now, moving on, what we did was we also interviewed a, um, uh, an economist to get his view on, on the market. So if I were to summarize uh, the quote here and, and to share some of the, the sites and, and um, views on the market, his perspective is that the market confidence will remain moderate to low in the following six months. So he's looking at a six month bracket. In the medium to long term, though, he feels that the COVID-19 situation will remain rather flat. So I think, you know, if we look at it from, from his perspective, the impact is about six months and possibly beyond, but hopefully in the long term, 
things will recover very quickly. Now, certainly there are certain industries affected in interim. So we're looking at sectors such as the banking, retail, travel, and hospitality sectors that will be impacted the most. But on the other hand, the silver lining is that we do see opportunities with sectors such as insurance companies and consumer uh, healthcare. There are growth potentials for those markets. Now, the other thing to mention is that we are, we are all undergoing a new work arrangement situation. And you can see that, um, you know, a lot of organizations are adapting to this. This has actually become a norm for us. And we can see that the new working arrangements will potentially change the way that commerce will be carried forward. So there's a, a few things that things are changing and we're certainly adapting to it. But the outlook from The Economist and from myself is that I think, you know, we are facing tougher times now, but hopefully things will get better very shortly. So moving on to the second poll, I'm keen to hear from you guys again. In your opinion, you know, we obviously gave our view on this. When do you think the market will recover, in your opinion? Okay, so what we can see is, uh, I think majority wrote, uh, majority voted seven to nine months, and then a few mentioned next year. So I think this is sort of in line with what the economists mentioned. And hopefully it's more closer to the seven to nine bracket instead of next year. Uh, once again, let's keep our fingers crossed and see, and see how things go. Now, in light of the COVID-19 situation, um, we recently spoke with uh, over 570 of our clients, and I want to share some, some views from their perspective on, on the market outlook. Uh, from a hiring appetite, uh, I think it's quite clear that everyone is taking a more conservative and prudent approach to hiring. So as you can see, new roles are temporarily put on hold, but on the other hand, any replacement or um, existing roles are, are still hiring. Now, there are certain sectors and industries that are still actively hiring given current market conditions. So you can see in terms of legal compliance and FMCG uh, markets, there's still a hiring appetite for those roles and sectors. In terms of working arrangements, there's no doubt that um, most organizations have a work from home policy. If not, at least they have a, an arrangement where they're working 50% at home. Uh, they have 50% of the staff working at home and the other 50% coming in. So that's more of an A and B shift, as we call it. Virtual meetings is certainly a norm. Um, and there's certainly no travels with, with uh, any organizations at the moment. So once again, everyone is trying to adapt to the changes of our new work from home policy. Uh, but we are certainly seeing uh, changes in, in terms of activity and productivity. Uh, I think people are adapting to, to the current markets. Now, moving on to initiatives taken from clients to adapt. The key point to highlight is that most clients, you know, having gone through GFC in the past, the objective really is to retain their existing workforce and staff. And in doing so, a lot of organizations are taking additional measures to save costs to retain their staff, but at the same time to not affect their livelihood. So what some organizations have did, done from a cost saving perspective is that they've asked their staff to take unpaid leave. So asking staff to work, say, four day work weeks. Uh, some employers have actually asked their uh, staff to temporarily take reduced salaries. And the range is between 20 to 30 percent within the next sort of three to six month bracket. Start dates for certain new, new joiners have been delayed. Uh, and we're also seeing, particularly for the frontline roles, such as retail, hospitality, you know, clients, excuse me, candidates are asked to sort of reallocate their roster and resources to make sure that, you know, everyone has, has uh, you know, a working opportunity, but then perhaps lesser hours. Last but not least, for certain sectors, there are negotiations um, being made to landlords uh, to hopefully provide a concession uh, during current tough times. So you can see the market sentiment is that once again, hiring appetite, a little bit more conservative and prudent, working arrangements, almost everyone has a work from home policy. And in terms of initiatives and clients, once again, a lot of, some organizations are taking cost cutting measures with the objective to retain their existing headcount. So, we also digged a little bit deeper to get the industry sentiments from various industry specialists and leaders. And uh, this is what I'd like to share from them. So we spoke to the CEO of an international market lifestyle and consumer products um, sector and, and group. And, and the market sentiment from this individual is that certainly the luxury and lifestyle markets will take a hit uh, in, in the short to medium term, without a doubt. But once again, in terms of the silver lining, online digital channels will see 
huge opportunities for growth, particularly in the FMCG space. We also spoke with the general manager of an IoT startup. Now, you know, industrial manufacturing is a more traditional uh, sector, as we all see. But once again, the opportunity is there for specialists who do have the expertise in the IoT space. And, and, and in particular, we're talking about the influx and advancement of, let's say, security systems, sensors, artificial intelligence, and any other IoT applications applicable to the industrial manufacturing and healthcare sector. So there's certainly opportunities there. And we can see, you know, this is a general manager of an IoT startup. So you can see that there's a lot of opportunities for even companies to start up at this point in time. We spoke to a general manager of a leading US-based legal service provider. Now, the sentiment is a little bit different there, I would say, because from this individual's perspective, the demand is high for legal practitioners, particularly in the regulatory and compliance space. Um, and certainly the demand for expertise in data privacy and cybersecurity, as well as intellectual property, those are all areas that we see uh, a potential growth. So, so I think you know, in the legal space, there's certainly opportunities for hiring in this, in this market. In terms of property construction, we spoke to an executive director of a well-established construction service provider. Now, without a doubt, the, the property and construction market has taken a hit because of the current climate. But in terms of the expertise that this individual sees in demand are potentially in the technology space. Again, if you're familiar with IoT technology or anything in the facilities management or maintenance side, once again, related to the technology field, then these roles are certainly in that. But without a doubt, we're going to see a slight hit in the short term. Finally, in terms of services, we spoke to a CEO of a chairman and chairman of a local education group. And the sentiment is that there's certainly opportunities in the education space. It's, it's actually an expanding market. In what regards? Well, in two regards. Um, the, the first part is essentially um, the admission side. So there's certainly a demand for uh, admission specialists to help facilitate students studying abroad. The second part is more in the ed tech space where there is a demand for curriculum developers to really enhance the learning experience uh, on the distance learning side. So these are some of the sentiments that we see from some industry specialists. And in terms of the third poll that we have for you, which of the following best describes your intention towards hiring staff? Okay, so interesting stat here. So 47% uh, of the group of the community here has mentioned that they have intention to hire, uh, whilst 25% no intention to hire and 28% mentioned that they don't know until COVID-19 passes. So look, that's still close to 50% uh, of the group here who have high intentions. Um, so once again, we do see that every industry is different and there are opportunities uh, for hiring for certain sectors. Thank you very much for submitting your, your poll, uh, guys. Really appreciate that. Now I want to move on to the salary benchmark report. So the salary benchmark report is an annual report we provide uh, for our clients and candidates. And we've uh, utilized 37,000 data points spoken to various clients and candidates and we certainly look at the various placements that we've done over the last year to collate the data uh, to provide the, the report that we have for you today. So what are some of the findings that we all want to share? Here are some of the details. So what is the current workforce thinking? So I want to start by drawing your attention to the bottom left of the presentation. 90% uh, of the people we, we spoke to or surveyed and from our data suggest that they do not consider unsatisfactory monetary benefits as a top decision to leave their job. Now, this is the really interesting point, considering that, you know, there's an assumption that most people change jobs for salary uh, increases. But if I draw your attention to the middle part of the slide, you can see that from a retention standpoint, training and development, um, employment, employee engagement and job promotion are certain areas that um, the Generation X and Millennials look for. Now, what's really interesting to note is that, you know, the values that they have for training and development uh, and engagement and recognition are things that they value more potentially than, than, than just the salary bit. So, so in terms of looking at the resources that you utilize for, for your organization, certainly it's important to utilize some resources into the training and development part and certainly to talk about career development and projections, um, employee engagement, those are all areas that are quite important in, in, in today's uh, market. 
If I draw attention to the right-hand side, you can see that 40% of Hong Kong workforce feel the company neglected their professional coaching and development. So this tells me that there's certainly an opportunity for certain organizations to once again focus their resources, as this is one of the key retention strategies for the workforce that we see today. Now, excuse me, as we move on to the following slides, um, we will have a more high level sort of industry insight on various industry sectors. Now, following the next few slides, we will have a Q&A session. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, feel free to uh, prepare them and, and Jermaine will help us administer that. Okay. So in terms of the consumer and retail sector, as I mentioned earlier, there's certainly a demand for digital and e-commerce specialists. But just to add to this, there, the demands for CRM, data analytics, data transformation specialists are also in high demand, along with supply chain specialists in supply and demand planning, as well as strategic sourcing. So we can see that this market is quite opportunistic for certain uh, specialties and skill sets. And if we look at the most active hiring functions, you can see sales, digital and technology, finance, customer service. These are all sectors that we see a potential um, hike in demand. Uh, and once again, when I see 40% and above in, in hiring, these are potentially some of the goals that might be, that might fall under your sectors as well. In terms of the industrial manufacturing and healthcare, we talked about the importance of uh, te technical and digital expertise in the IoT space. But what's really interesting to note is that there's also a demand for green football investment and strategy professionals. Now, let's be honest, we're in a very interesting market at this moment. You know, a lot of organizations from a valuation point of view is quite opportunistic to buy and sell organizations. So in terms of looking for specialists who particularly focused on the greenfield investment side, this is a particularly opportunistic time for specialists in this field. We can also see in terms of trending skills, experience in regulatory compliance, cybersecurity, in the healthcare industry is, is sought after. Um, and in terms of most active hiring functions, we're looking at digital technology, supply chain, sales, and finance. Moving on to the legal space, as I mentioned earlier, the demand for lawyers with specialty in the cybersecurity space is, is highly sought after. But what is also interesting to note is that the demand for lawyers specialized in M&A and IPO space is also in, in demand. Now, certainly in the current climate, I would say that there are fewer M&A and IPO projects. But once again, if we look at a trajectory of, let's say, six to nine months or nine months and beyond, we can see an influx of demand for certain roles in, in this sector. In terms of industries, we can see that lawyers in biochemical and technology sectors are in high demand. And what's really interesting to note is that the average salary increase when switching jobs can yield north of 20% and above. So this is certainly, you know, a, I would say a candidate short uh, market and a highly sought after market as well. In terms of property construction, as I mentioned earlier, this is a market driven um, sector. And, and in terms of the, the short-term demands for, for talents, I would say that, once again, if you are accustomed to technology, IoT, um, then, then those are skill sets that are in high demand. But one thing to note in this sector is that traditionally, clients would essentially look for candidates from retail industry, uh, excuse me, from property moving on to another property sector. But now you can see that clients are a little bit more open-minded. They're open to hiring talents from different diverse industry sectors, just to bring in new flavors and ideas to the business. So that's a bit of a shift in terms of the mindset of the hiring strategies that they have. Once the, in terms of local projects, we can see that once the market picks up again, the projects will start coming in and the demands for property construction, sales and marketing will continue to increase. In terms of salary though, you can see that salary increases are in the range of 10 to 20% when we look for a switch. So once again, Property construction is also a kind of a short market, uh, particularly for a sector like Hong Kong. And finally, moving into the services side. Uh, services is quite generic and broad, um, but I would say that the hiring activity for services industry is a little bit more um, subdued uh, at the moment. It's a, it's a little bit more prudent and conservative, um, but we can see that the hiring needs are in technology. Let's say, for example, the cloud technology space. 
Um, certainly there are needs and demands for hiring in the technology space as well as the digital space, as we mentioned earlier, IoT. Uh, and if I were to highlight again the education space, the demand for um, the talents in the ed tech space uh, are, are also in demand. Now, if I look at the trending skills, uh, I would say that uh, language proficiency, you know, trilingual skill sets in English, Cantonese, and Mandarin, highly preferred. Um, we also talk about compliance and legal. So most active hiring functions, I would say, are the more traditional sectors. So finance, accounting, legal, we look at technology, as I mentioned earlier, customer service. And I would say in the current climate, contracting is, is certainly a, a big sort of opportunity for uh, a lot of our clients as, as they shift their hiring strategy into more uh, contracting focused hires as opposed to permanent hires. So in a nutshell, this more or less um, concludes the, the sharing that I have, of course, uh, a quick snapshot of the market updates. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, ch the challenges and the uncertainties that we see are hopefully short term with a view that in the long term uh, or the medium to long term, things will improve. Uh, very rapidly. And as I mentioned, Hong Kong is a place that will bounce back very quickly, and I'm a firm believer of this. So on that note, um, I will move on to the Q&A section, and um, welcome to take any questions that you guys have. Okay, um, we already have two questions come in from the question and answer box. You can just... Got it. Yeah. Okay. Up. Okay, so... Uh, I have a question. Uh, what, so one question is, will active job seekers be willing to accept lower salaries given the current economic condition? Um, my answer is very likely. Uh, you know, we, we are in a situation where um, I think, you know, we are a little bit, uh, you know, in a tougher market where candidates need to be a little bit more open-minded uh, to, to accept either a flat salary or at times possibly a, a salary cut. Now, certainly, this also depends on the situation of the candidate. If you're, if you currently have a role and you're looking to change jobs, this is a different scenario to, let's say, if you're immediately available and you're willing to take a role. So, I think it also depends. But I would say, uh, relative to previous markets, uh, job seekers are generally a little bit more open-minded to take a flat uh, salary uh, move or even a lower salary. Once again, this also depends on the industry that you're from. Because I mentioned previously, there are certain sectors where you can actually get a salary hike for a change, but there are others where I would say the, the salary uh, changing um, values are a little bit different. Uh, another question I have is, uh, great. So, great question here. Um, how does COVID-19 uh, compare with GFC and SARS. Now, incidentally, uh, I, I was I was in Hong Kong in both occasions. Uh, so, for I would say the key difference is for for I start with SARS. SARS was primarily a Hong Kong uh, issue, uh, so so it certainly impacted uh, the, the the local market. Um, whereas GFC was a global issue, but it affected primarily the financial services sector. But then when we look at COVID-19, it's, it's a global pandemic. And I think the biggest difference is that it's, un, it's unknown. It's uncertain. You know, there are cases that are increasing day by day. Uh, whereas if we look at uh, GFC, we know the culprit of how this situation came about. So in terms of fixing the problem, uh, at least there's a root cause involved. For SARS, um, once again, because it affected primarily Hong Kong and not the globe, the, the global impact is, is not uh, as significant. Um, because we are in a global uh, crisis at the moment and a global pandemic, the unknown is that even if Hong Kong controls the situation, we are also impacted by our global partners that we do commerce and business with. So, so this is the part I think that makes the current situation a little bit more challenging than before. And certainly, as I mentioned, it's a little bit more uncertain. But that's a great question. Okay. Okay. Um, so I have a question from Carl. Uh, so approximately how do new jobs account are registered in 2019 in quarter one compared to 2020? I would actually say that the, the, 
the, the active candidates, um, I mean, it really depends on the situation for the candidates. Certainly, I would say candidates are a little bit more conservative this year to changing roles than in the past. They're less opportunistic because, first of all, the supply of roles in the market are less than before. Um, but then for those who unfortunately were put in a uh, challenging situation uh, or are actively looking for roles, certainly they'll be very active. I would say in comparison though, uh, I, I would say that the number of registrations this year would be, new registrations I mean, would be relatively less than last year. Um, but in terms of our candidate engagement, I would say that we're probably speaking to more candidates now than before. Okay, so um, I have a question from Iris. Uh, so the question is, do you have any idea on the salary increase forecast for 2021? Uh, or is the salary freeze expected? Gosh, I mean, we're still in 2020. It's really hard for me to project 2021, if I were to be very honest. But I do see that at least for 2020, um, I would say the the salary um, the salary sort of adjustments would be a little bit more humble. With reference to last year, it was about three point six to three point eight percent. I would say this year, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say freeze for all industries, but I would say for certain industries and sectors, they might be a hiring freeze. Uh, excuse me, it might be a salary freeze. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, some organizations are taking measures to take pay cuts in the current market. So. Um, overall speaking, I would see a rather flat move in, in terms of the salary adjustments. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So I have a question from Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Um, so would you shed more light on the situation on banking and finance sector? So uh, because today's uh, webinar is more focused on the commerce side, I can only give you some insight on the commerce side, but not necessarily from the banking and finance sector. Uh, but what I can share in general is that the, the, the situation is that a lot of organizations are taking a more conservative and prudent approach. Um, a lot of organizations are moving on to cost saving measures, once again, with the intent to retain their existing headcount and workforce and if necessary there might be additional measures uh, taken to to further reduce costs in the near future but i would say for now uh, a lot of organizations are trying to adapt to the current situation so one element is the cost saving component the other element is is the work from home arrangements uh, and trying to really turn the current work from home situation into more of a business as usual scenario um, which i think things are actually taking a turn here and it's moving towards that direction. So, so once again, I think in terms of how business or commerce will be driven in the near future, I think this is certainly a starting point for that. But for further questions, Jimmy, I can certainly inquire uh, and, and let you know uh, for the banking and finance side um, after today's session. Okay. Okay, so uh, Iris has another question. Uh, will we get a copy of the presentation? Uh, sure, no problem. Uh, we can arrange for that. Uh, I believe uh, for those who have registered, you've left your contact details. We can share the details with you after uh, today's session. So it's not a problem. Okay, I have another question. Um, what type of clients um, are, are more active in hiring. So, um, as I mentioned before, I would say, uh, you know, sectors such as legal, private practice, uh, we're looking at FMCG, consumer, uh, you know, those are some of the sectors that I see uh, growth in, in hiring. Uh, we also talked about education just now. Um, those are some of the industries and sectors that we see growth. In terms of skill, uh, skill sets and talent, once again, if you're in the technology, digital space, once again, legal space, uh, those are some of the areas that we see um, potential opportunities in the client, current climate. Okay. 
Okay, I have a question from Ben. Uh, it is reported that a majority of World Bank is not hiring graduates this year, other companies to follow. Um, hard to say. Uh, I would say, in general, the overall high appetite this year would be um, less than previous years. Now, as for grads, I would say there will still be opportunities for large corporations that still have, let's say, management training programs. I, I believe that they will still go with those um, programs. But in terms of the overall uh, hiring demand for uh, junior hires and graduates, I would say in comparison to last year, it would be less, but just with other roles as well. The other thing I mentioned was that there will potentially be more contract hires uh, in, in the current market. And this may be a potential opportunity for graduates to consider as well. Okay, so I have a question from Sophia. Uh, have you seen much headcount reduction in the MNCs in the current environment? Uh, yes, I would say uh, definitely. And um, I think the situation is multinationals still have a higher appetite. They're still keen to invest into Asia and Hong Kong in particular. But just with the current uh, COVID-19 situation, a lot of multinationals have decided to put their hiring on temporary hold uh, for the next few months uh, to observe and see until they resume the role. So um, I would say in the short term, there will certainly be a reduction in hiring for multinationals uh, because of the uncertainty of even the headquarters overseas. But, but in terms of their intent to invest into Hong Kong uh, and Asia in general, then there's certainly an intent to continue to drive the hiring in, in this market. Um, so I, I really see the, the headcount reduction as once again, more of a short term situation and I'm looking at a trajectory of possibly a three to six month uh, hold or break uh, as opposed to a very long term situation. Okay. Um, okay, so I have a question from Harrison. Uh, wouldn't you see any increase in the healthcare industry as many countries will now realize how much unprepared we are? <laughs> with our hospital industry. Um, when you say increase, are you, I presume you're referring to increase in um, healthcare, possibly healthcare supplies, hopefully uh, in terms of practitioners. I would say, um, as I mentioned earlier, the demand for FNCG healthcare, I mean, certainly we do see increase in demand for, I would say, mostly healthcare um, suppliers uh, as opposed to healthcare talent, because I think Hong Kong is, in a very good position in terms of the, the public and private sector in providing healthcare uh, service. And, and certainly, even if we do need to increase talent in this market, it, it, it's, it's, it's quite challenging to increase. I mean, everyone's uh, short in, in, in uh, medical uh, services. But in terms of supplies, uh, I would say Hong Kong is fortunately in a fairly strategic place in, in, um, in being in a hub where we do have access to a lot of supplies relative to other markets. And in comparison to other markets, I would say Hong Kong is a little bit more prepared, uh, whether it's culturally or whether it's through previous experience. Through SARS in the past, um, you know, it has actually prepared people in Hong Kong to wear masks frequently. And this has certainly um, channeled in more resources uh, in terms of medical supplies to, to cater to the demands in Hong Kong. Okay. Jermaine, how are we doing with time? Um, let me see, you are, you have 20 minutes, so you're at 11.40. You okay, mm -hmm. so maybe I'll take a few more. Um, okay. Has COVID-19 affected the willingness uh, for candidates to consider a contract role? Um, yeah, I would say so. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I think some organizations are taking a, a different approach to, to hiring strategy and they are hiring more contractors. Um, and for candidates, I think it's just a change in mindset. Uh, you know, contract terms range from months to it could be a year, it could be years. Um, and, and so, I would say, you know, this is also a time for, for candidates to, to really think about, you know, the options they have. And if a contract role is attractive, and certainly it helps, you know, develop the, the, the skill set of this individual and allows them to grow and develop, then I would say go for it.
Okay, I have a question from Janet. Uh, do you see more contract roles come up in the views? Uh, yeah, I, I would say so. Um, but once again, it, it varies by industries and sectors. Okay. Okay, I have an interesting question here. Um, work from home, is it really working for Hong Kong companies? Uh, will the trend reverse after COVID-19? Um, look, I mean, certainly I think work from home is a temporary measure. I, I would imagine that particularly for a lot of industries that are more face-to-face -face centric, um, they certainly need to have the face-to-face -face interaction. So for those industries um, that have more face-to-face -face interactions, then I would say it will certainly reverse for sure. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that the work from home arrangement has really changed the way we do commerce uh, in, in terms of travel. You know, do we necessarily need to travel to different regions to hold meetings in the future, or can we rely on the technologies that we have to do it effectively? Uh, and the answer is a lot of meetings are done remotely now, and it's actually quite effective. So this might change the perspective of how meetings are run in the future. And once again, this could also be a cost saving measure for a lot of corporations in the near future as well. It's also more efficient and more time efficient. So I would say for certain industries, yes. And for others, I would say probably not. They will resume to face to face as soon as they can. Okay. Okay, um, it, I have a next question. You mentioned contracting. Is it a popular thing in Hong Kong? We are considering it as an organization to provide a more uh, I think it's getting popular. I mean, actually there are a lot of contractors in Hong Kong. Um, now, I understand that, uh, you know, the, the paradigm for Hong Kong is that it's mostly firm hires, but the reality is that the contracting space is, is certainly increasing. Uh, and we do see this for a lot of sectors, particularly the financial services side. So, um, I would say that, um, yeah, I would definitely say that contracting is, is an area that a lot of organizations are starting to consider. Okay, I have another question. Uh, what is the best job hunting strategy for candidate under current epidemic um, environment? Um, look, I would say the job hunting strategy does not change by the environment. It's, it's more about how you prepare yourself for, for, for the goals you want. The first thing to identify is really to understand yourself. You know, what are your key skills, experience, um, and, and roles that you desire? Um, because you certainly want to play to your strengths in terms of what you want to apply for. And then the second part is to do the necessary preparation and research to find out which organizations appeal to you most in, in the type of function and role you want to work for. And then of course, align that with the skill set that you have. In terms of resources, I would say it's more or less the same. You know, you can obviously appeal to job boards, you can apply to Most Direct, you can use the services and recruitment organizations such as us to help you find roles. Um, I would say the strategy is somewhat similar. The only difference I would say is that in the current market, uh, you want to be a little bit more open-minded in terms of the roles you want to uh, appeal for, um, given that the supplier of roles in comparison to the past are, are, are fewer. So it's just being a little bit more focused and being a little bit more open-minded. Um, and then I have a question about the bonus payout for 2020 um, and salary increase. I, I believe I answered a similar question previously. And once again, I would expect that the salary increase will be rather flat this year. Um, and I would say there are chances where some organizations, because they've taken some cost-cutting measures, that the bonus payout um, will, will be a little bit more conservative and humble. Um, or in, in some organizations, there might not be bonus. So it really depends on the industry and sector uh, that we're discussing. Um, but, but I would say the overall forecast for this year is a little bit more conservative than previous years. Okay. So I have another question from Iris. Uh, could you please share how much reduction in hiring have you observed in the last three months? 
Um, I, I don't have the specific stats for that, if I were to be honest. And, and once again, it really depends on the industry and sector that, that you want to inquire about because every industry and sector is different. But certainly I'm keen to maybe address this question after the webinar and you can email me direct and, and I can find out a little bit more information for you if you can provide more information to me as to which sector you want to inquire about. Okay, I believe I've answered Okay. Okay. Sorry, I have a few more here. Um, question from Frankie: uh, Our companies, uh, any companies, are offering four-day work in Hong Kong. What is the trend? Um, yes, I, I think some organizations are moving towards a, a part-time or four-day work week arrangement. Once again, with the intent to reduce costs and to retain the, the existing staff that they have or the existing workforce they have within the organization. Um, this is a trend that we're seeing. Uh, I think for some industries such as retail, uh, hospitality, travel, they are even more aggressive than um, offering a four-day work week. Some are even offering, let's say, a three-day work week. Some are asking their staff to take unpaid leave. Um, so this is a, certainly a trend that we see. Um, and the impact is, I, I would say, essentially, uh, uh, impacting a lot of industries and sectors, um, but predominantly for those that are more on the frontline side, then, then they are taking more aggressive measures with that. Okay. Okay, question from Max. Uh, do you see any company doing differently or more creative approach than only taking pay cut or pay leave to save on the cost? Um, gosh, I mean, that that's a... That's, uh, that's the question that I think varies by different industries and sectors. But I, I would say from a human resource standpoint, essentially we can only look at taking pay cuts um, and, and uh, possibly reducing salaries. Uh, uh, obviously a more aggressive measure would be to uh, do a bit of restructuring in the organization. But in terms of other measures, uh, as I mentioned earlier, some organizations are talking to the landlords to see if they can get a concession on the rent. But I'm aware that, that there are some landlords that have offered a bit of a concession on rent in the, in the coming two to three months, particularly for the retail sector. Um, I would say that uh, you know general reduction in expenses is, is something that some organizations are looking at as well. Um, so, so there are different measures that, that different organizations are taking different costs. But once again, this really depends on the industry and sector we're looking at. Aviation is a good example. Um, you know, obviously with much fewer flights that we see in, in, in the current space, uh, a lot of planes are parked. They're not even operating. And, and the question is, where do you park the planes? Um, because the parking fee in Hong Kong is higher than, than other regions strategically. The, the the some organi some uh, airlines are actually parking their planes in, in other countries with lower parking fees than Hong Kong. So it really varies by the sector and industry we talk about. Okay. Um, I think this is possibly the final question, Jermaine. Yeah. Uh, so have you seen a lot of regional roles? being moved to other Asian countries, uh, how would you foresee this happen? Um, look, I mean, yes, we have seen some roles um, move from, uh, let's say, Hong Kong to Singapore. But likewise, we've also seen uh, organizations move from Singapore, China to Hong Kong. Um, in terms of how I foresee this happening, it really depends on the strategy of, of the organization. Um, I would say in terms of Hong Kong, Hong Kong is still the hub for the Asia Pac region for a lot of organizations for a few reasons. Um, it's proximity to China. If they have strong ties or business ties to China, they want to be located in Hong Kong uh, because uh, of the On the other hand, if the organization is to um, really expand or develop the place that most organizations want to relocate to. So, so it really depends on the strategy. Uh, Hong Kong really a strategy is to primarily sort of expand and develop in Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia market, I would say it's more Singapore. So 
but it really depends and, and it really depends on the industry and the sector that that is in question. Okay, so um, yeah, I believe I've answered all of the questions uh, so far. And certainly if you have any more questions along the way, uh, please feel free to, to uh, uh, let me know. Uh, my, my email address is in the, in the slide here. Uh, or you can certainly give me a call at any time. Um, now, I want to take the opportunity to, to thank all of you for, for your time in attending uh, today's webinar. If you want to inquire more about our uh, salary employment forecast, feel free to um, scan the QR code or uh, click on the link below uh, and you can get a full report from us on this. Um, and finally, I just want to uh, say stay safe, uh, stay healthy and uh, really hope that you guys uh, have a wonderful afternoon. And final, final thing I want to highlight is that at the end of the webinar, we will have a short survey that we will send to you. Uh, so I'll be grateful if you can give us some feedback as well. And uh, we'll wrap up here, I suppose. So thank you so much and uh, take care.